are negotiating future contracts in line with our current thinking about issues like discipline and uh, transparency regarding personnel decisions. And um, I think the city attorney taking this step will, will start the process of figuring out where we want to be as a city government uh, when that contract comes up. Third, I am requesting that the police commission approve a new body camera footage release policy by the end of October. And I am sending a letter today to the commission um, that uh, gives them um, principles from which to um, uh, finalize that policy. This is an issue that really, um, you know, that we have heard from the protesters in Battery Park, and they, they're right that it, it is a problem. We don't have a formal policy around this release at this point. This is something we know needs to be addressed for some time. It was assigned uh, to a different committee uh, in 2019 uh, uh, for work um, and was eclipsed by other events and, and other priorities in that committee work. It's time to get this done. We need a new policy by the end of October. We're laying some principles out about that policy for the police commission, which is the body that signs off on policies uh, for policing uh, to, to consider. Um, and that, that letter and that, those principles will be released today um, as part of this announcement. Um, fourth, um, by the end of October, there has been some, this isn't a brand new announcement, but I am committing that by the end of October, we're going to bring forth in a formal way uh, this uh, idea of having at least two community service liaisons working in the Burlington Police Department, people with not with traditional policing backgrounds, but with uh, backgrounds in, in social work so we can add to the capacity of the city in responding to uh, a whole variety of events that today, a whole variety of issues that today fall the, to the police and sworn officers to respond to, um, whether it's uh, whether it's following up on people we come in contact with who are suffering from opioid use disorder, or it is uh, people uh, responding to acute mental health uh, calls, or um, uh, engaging with um, uh, uh, members of the of the community who are experiencing various challenges in a way that that uh, we can benefit from having uh, a social worker there. We will we will now have this capacity if the council agrees, and we've had some preliminary discussions. But I'm hopeful the council will agree. This is an important additional capacity to add. And fifth, um, I and this um, this is in response to a recent public records request. I am requesting that the police commission develop a new policy regarding the release of investigations into officer conduct. We have had a long-standing policy, it goes back well before I came into this office, of um, protecting uh, uh, police investigations, investigations of, of police actions um, from public release. Uh, it is, um, there are valid reasons why that has been the policy in the past, but we're at a new moment. We need to be balancing these, uh, the, the, the privacy concerns and the uh, concerns about ensuring that officers can continue to do their uh, job with uh, the, the current thinking on transparency and accountability for officers. So um, I have asked, I am asking the police commission for their help in deciding where the line should be drawn uh, uh, in, in weighing and balancing these, these different interests. So, you know, um, some of what I just listed for you again, if we've been, people have been listening carefully to the demonstrators in, in Battery Park, um, uh, you know, know that this includes, you know, that, that they spoke specifically, I have spoken specifically about body camera policy. Um, in, what I've announced here today and the creation of this new position, um, uh, I see as responding to uh, not only the specific uh, calls for change, um, but also the broader uh, call for to ensure that we are doing everything we can to root systemic racism out of all of our institutions, including policing, that we are uh, doing um, 
uh, all that we can to ensure that the way we conduct policing is in line with what the community uh, wants it to be. And this is a this is a call again that I've heard not just in the last uh, last month um, and not even in just the last couple of years. I for as long as I've been in this office, I have had this sense that as much as this community appreciates and values the work of the men and the women of the Burlington Police Department. Uh, we we now in the 21st century in 2020 um, are looking for uh, changes as well. Um, as we figure this out, as we as we uh, try uh, to rethink and re envision um, what we want policing to be here in Burlington, um, one la final really important message that I want to share today is that. Um, we, the, the, I think it's critical that as we do that work as a community that we see police officers themselves as partners in this work. Um, this is in part a, a practical concern in that I think if you look at the history of uh, police reform efforts, um, it is pretty clear that little long-term change in policing culture and practice is possible without the buy-in and the support of police officers. Um, on another level, um, I, I also think it's the right thing to do in, in this sense. We are, we, are, we, have, we are fortunate to have, have dozens of men and women who on a daily basis uh, go out and do a very challenging job to keep this community safe and to um, respond to violent situations and uh, work very hard to solve uh, crimes and they are doing this work even as their profession and it, and and even the, the the very kind of definition of public safety is rapidly changing and uh, as as we do this work I, I from my perspective none of our officers deserve to have their names on wanted posters or to have to console their children when they're taunted for uh, being the child of a police officer. We, we have to find a way, I think, if we're gonna succeed at this, to support, value, and engage our sworn officers and include them in the forging of this new consensus of what public safety means. And if we do that, the work itself will be better and have a far more enduring result. The last two years have been a very challenging time um, for policing in Burlington. And it is my hope that with our actions of earlier this week and today, as well as uh, actions that we've done with the council in recent months, we can begin to move forward and make progress on the work ahead. Uh, I look forward to working alongside Kyle Dodson, Chief Murad, and the entire Burlington community to get this work done. Thank you. So now I would like to uh, invite uh, Kyle to, to share some remarks. And as I do so, uh, I wanna acknowledge and thank his father and uh, for, for, for being with us today and, and for, uh, for raising uh, an outstanding community leader. And uh, Kyle, thank you. Thank you for taking on this challenge that you certainly didn't uh, need to take on and for being here today and, and helping the community through this, uh, this moment of challenge and, and promise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's great to see everybody. Uh, per this challenge that uh, uh, the mayor spoke of, uh, I take it on uh, willingly, but I did appreciate that uh, upon running into a, a friend and um, ally in the work from the community, uh, his first comment, he's here in this crowd, he said, now I know you're crazy. He said, taking on the Y job when we had a we had an uphill battle, a lot of money to raise was a tough challenge. But he looked me in the eye and said, now I know you're crazy. And um, all I can say to that was a pretty appropriate comment. Um, uh, next thing I, I want to do I, uh, this morning, uh, I've got an, a colleague here, uh, my good friend and uh, a partner uh, in crime, uh, Rick Blount. Rick Blount's the VP of development at the Y. And uh, he was uh, uh, front and center and led, really, uh, the work that we did with so many community members to support 
uh, the building, what we believe is a, is a pretty incredible uh, facility and we've gotten pretty good um, affirmation of that. So we appreciate that. But the point is this morning we were on a call um, with a house committee uh, at our state house um, about a new initiative called Masks for Missions about getting more masks out there. Uh, obviously there's masks out there, but this was a different angle, connect with not-for-profit community. Uh, and I got to talking about masks and the fact that I like this idea because uh, I have a lot of masks because, um, uh, you know, sometimes I, I like to attend to uh, my particular clothing on a day and those uh, hospital uh, grade masks just don't work for me. So I like having some fun masks. And uh, this morning I was gonna wear one that I recently received in a gift from the Burlington Rotary Club of lots of masks to the Y, um, that had an American flag on it. And uh, I thought I wanted it to be a statement. Um, I was thinking in light of uh, Colin Kaepernick and uh, other ways we see the flag used, uh, this connects directly for me to Mar Moreau's comments about my dad. Um, uh, it is uh, completely um, due to uh, my mother and father, Charles Dotson, who's right there, and Joyce Dotson, uh, who passed several years back. Uh, that I'm here today, that uh, to the degree that um, uh, I offer anything of value to the community, uh, it was uh, because of the way they raised me. Uh, and my dad's a Marine. Um, and, uh, you know, he worked hard all his life and paid taxes. And I feel he very much earned uh, the right of being American and flying the flag. Uh, and I hope uh, some part of this uh, job allows me to close the gap between what I think of as the flag, what it means to me and my family, and when I think about my dad, and sometimes the way people use the flag in ways that um, uh, perplex me um, and uh, um, strikes me that we are uh, saying something different when we fly the flag. And I'm hoping we can close that gap um, in this work. Um, so big shout out to my family. Moreau didn't uh, point out that my dad's here, but also my son is here. My youngest son, uh, that's Julius Dotson, standing next to him. Um, and uh, Julius is a freshman at Howard University. It seems uh, appropriate. Uh, at this moment and the topic we're talking about that uh, a biracial young man from Vermont who loves his community uh, grew up here uh, but he went to arguably uh, the most prominent of our historically black colleges um, and that he uh, developed the sensibility and the courage and confidence to make that move uh, right here in this town right here playing soccer on this field playing baseball um, uh, something that looked like baseball uh, right on this field here <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it, it makes me so uh, proud and gratified to have uh, three generations of Dotson men here uh, in Burlington, um, the place I've uh, chosen to make home. I came here, been working in the city since 95. Um, uh, Julius is and my other two sons, Manny and Isaac, uh, and their mom and I chose to raise our boys here very um, purposefully. Uh, and we could not be more gratified with how they've turned out and how this um, community helped to raise them up properly. Um, so, so I wanted to say that. I want to move to some thanks. I want to thank uh, my uh, whole Y family. I want to thank the board. Uh, this is a big deal. Um, this COVID time and just generally, uh, the Y has no shortage of uphill battle ourselves. Uh, we're embroiled in the work uh, and it's tough work. Um, and as you can well imagine, uh, I'm, I'm, at the, uh, you know, I'm at the head, but with a, a team, very much a team approach of that work. Uh, and so it was no easy uh, decision, I don't think. Um, but it's a testament to the board that, it, that it, they made it easily. They made a not easy decision easily. Uh, the support was immediate, um, a sense that we had to do this. This is a we, I see this um, as something I'm doing in collaboration with my board colleagues. Lisa Ventress, our board chair, also executive director of Vermont Business Roundtable. Uh, and today, um, very uh, graciously um, representing our board is Katie Hawley, uh, someone who I'm uh, very close with and uh, really appreciate her stepping up this way and how the Y agrees that this is consistent with our values of social responsibility um, and honesty, caring, respect, uh, responsibility. So we're, we're really pleased that we're able to do this. I wanna thank my staff, Rick here uh, representing that. I have a management team I work with. Uh, this is challenging for them. We work closely, there's six of us. Uh, we're attached at the hip, um, but I really trust that they and the board are gonna step up uh, to provide the leadership that the Y needs and to continue uh, to help us. Uh, thus far, I would argue we've navigated successfully. And I trust we will continue to do so during trying times. Um, and I think this is going to hopefully help uh, this community uh, appreciate how all in the Y is and how important we uh, think this particular work is. Just quick comments. Uh, we don't have time at all to talk about uh, the, the quite frankly horrible um, history and legacy of racism in this country. 
Um, it's a thing I think that one of the challenges is that we don't often talk about in ways that I think are important to and that um, racism for me really uh, exists in its most pernicious forms uh, in the collective. Right? It's the fact that uh, there are systems of power and privilege that do the worst to oppress people. It's, it, it does play out through individuals and sometimes through uh, hateful acts, um, but the things that really uh, uh, are difficult for BIPOC folks are what happens uh, at the institutional collective level. What happens to us when we want to buy a home? What happens to us when we want to educate our children properly? What happens to us when we want to get a job? What happens to us uh, when in places we encounter um, uh, law enforcement? Uh, that's where it plays out in its most difficult ways, and that's the collective. But the collective is made up of individuals, um, and uh, uh, it's individuals who don't actively uh, fight against this history and continuing um, systems um, and uh, uh, infection uh, in the warp and woof uh, of our community that allows it to continue. I mean, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat cliched, but it's true. Uh, if you're not for us, you're against us. Uh, you got to be actively um, fighting to uproot uh, what we've inherited historically or else you are uh, by default complicit. Um, and that's part of what we're doing. That's hard. It's hard for an individual. I was talking, I'm having a lot of conversations. Uh, when you get up in the morning and you go to work just to make some money and you're struggling to make enough money to put food on the table and pay your rent, it's really hard to have someone uh, look at you and say, you're a racist, you're the problem. I get that. Um, and that's that individual versus collective. Uh, and each individual really has got to look in the mirror um, and hopefully uh, try to um, calibrate um, their activities with some sort of um, responsiveness. So uh, you look in the mirror, uh, but you also look to the community. So if you say to yourself, hey, I'm not a racist, but you know, you're sitting at the country club with a bunch of white folks who have power and privilege, that may not be the best checks and balances. You come here to Roosevelt Park, you go to Boys and Girls Club, you talk to young people, BIPOC folks living in the community, and you ask them what's happening for them, you might get a different perspective on your role uh, and uh, how you might be complicit, and hopefully you work to jive. If there's dissonance, which I would argue there will be, uh, in that conversation, hopefully then your conscience tells you, I gotta work to close that gap, because I, I love this young person. This young person's our future, and they just told me something that was very disturbing. It's not the kind of information or perspective I get uh, when I'm at the board uh, table or when I'm in um, some other areas, but when I come here, I see the pain, I see the struggle, um, and I'm touched by that, and hopefully I'm moved and compelled to start doing, once again, the proactive work uh, to deal against that. Um, and all that is to say is I see this uh, move, this very bold, I believe, move by our mayor uh, to help us uh, move that down the line. I hope I have something uh, that I can offer in that work. Um, there's going to be a lot of questions from this, and uh, I don't uh, mean to be in any way dismissive, but uh, as always, the devil's in the details, um, and we're working those out. Uh, this is a time where uh, it's often required that you move fast, uh, and any of you who've held leadership positions, uh, you might share my opinion that that's, uh, that's some of what leaders do. Um, sometimes you, um, you, know, you push um, with uh, stakeholders, community. sometimes you pull people along. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's our responsibility, I think, to look down the road, see what's happening, uh, move boldly and quickly there, and do the appropriate work of filling in the gaps and doing the due diligence. But uh, there is a time uh, uh, sometimes to act, um, and act uh, before you necessarily have all the ducks in a row, not because you want to, but because the circumstances uh, require that. Uh, last, I want to uh, end with a, a request. Um, this is outreach. Uh, outreach to all of you here, outreach to anyone who uh, is able to see this press conference, uh, outreach to people who um, uh, gain a wind of, of what we're trying to do here, uh, to come out and, and support, to link arms and help us um, uh, really realize the potential of our community. The potential is unbelievable. We like to think of our ourselves as a place apart in Burlington, and I do think there's something special about us, uh, but we exist in context and we have to be respectful, uh, acknowledging in that context. Um, we don't get, I don't believe, uh, to say that's true except for us. That may happen over there, but it's not true in our little uh, progressive hamlet. Um, my opinion is that's just not how it works. Um, so I'm, I'm asking people to join in, engage. I'm not asking you necessarily to uh, come to the table and say, Kyle, Moreau, uh, you know, John, you have it right. Come to the table, disagree. 
respectfully disagree. Um, uh, myself and Chief Murad have been respectfully involved in some dialogue over the last couple of days. It wasn't easy, uh, but it was respectful and appreciative. Um, and uh, I would argue it actually strengthened our connection uh, rather than severed. And we did not necessarily see eye to eye in all those conversations. Um, but I think we both approached it in a way that uh, I know already that uh, Chief Murad um, sees it as a pretty serious uh, responsibility on his part to model um, how you engage. Uh, he's got two children. He's got a, a son that he talks uh, really um, glowingly about. And, and I, I, I feel his sense of obligation to be living in a way that he can look his son in the eye and say, this is how you conduct yourself. This is how you move through difficult uh, experiences. This is how you um, uh, show respect uh, to people that you're engaged with, even when uh, there's space between uh, you and that person. There's a way you uh, comport yourself. Um, and I've already seen that, and I, uh, that gives me such um, optimism about the work that we're going to be able uh, to do together. Um, I had an interesting uh, uh, experience just to say uh, the, the why, uh, you know, uh, from someone within, actually. Uh, there's a, a white woman who works in our early child care, and she's an activist. She's an ally. Uh, she's a, a really impressive uh, woman, and she's been doing the work herself. And it was her who actually reached out to me and the leadership team and said, Kyle, this George Floyd moment, uh, uh, I think the why has got to be out there. you you got to say something. And I had been struggling myself, what was appropriate, what could we add? It, you know, it wasn't at all that I didn't want to, but I was just trying to figure out uh, how we did it. Um, uh, and uh, after I got that email, I knew it was time to act, and so we put something together. The community responded overwhelmingly uh, positively. Um, it's been wonderful, and in coming here, uh, I've got a, a counselor, one of our uh, very generous donors, but uh, more importantly, a mentor and a coach for me, and I wanted to just uh, give the person a heads up. Uh, and the person jumped right into strategy, um, and uh, what they, uh, uh, they, they said that uh, they believe that I had uh, heretofore uh, been able to establish myself uh, as a trusted broker in this community, um, and uh, they were concerned about um, uh, that position. What, uh, what, what trying to uh, wade into this challenging time would do to that position. Um, uh, talked about getting squeezed in the middle. Um, and those are real risks. Uh, but you got to make a call sometimes. Uh, I trust Moreau. I trust what he's trying to do. I trust Chief Murad. I trust this community. Uh, so I'm going to go in there and give it the best of my ability. I'm going to be transparent. Uh, I'm going to tell people how I'm feeling. I'm going to uh, um, try to proceed according to a group of, uh, set of principles. That's probably going to make it hard for me at times. Uh, it may be hard for the people I'm talking with, but I hope we can all uh, live up to that um, and uh, take the risks that uh, this uh, friend and mentor I talked to this morning presented. But importantly, um, uh, and it wasn't clear. I didn't know. You don't want to talk to him. Uh, upon closing, uh, the person said, good luck. I'm here for you. Uh, and that was important to hear. And, and pretty much everyone I've talked to has said the same thing. Uh, so if you're listening out there, some people, you're going to be getting a call. I'm going to say, like, remember when I wrote the statement before we were here and you said you'd help? Here I am. You know, so the, the stakes are a little higher. At that point, helping was, you know, importantly, you know, writing a check for the why. But the help I'm going to be asking for now um, is of a, of a different nature. But, uh, but I trust that uh, uh, many of these uh, folks who I've uh, uh, develop friendships and relationships over time with are, are going to step up to the plate. Uh, this is this is our moment. Uh, this is the nation's moment, uh, and I'm so uh, so gratified uh, to be part of it. Thank you all. Thank you, Kyle. Um, I uh, I just want to uh, invite. I want to invite Chief Muir out here to the podium in a second, and in doing so, I want to acknowledge the remarkably challenging circumstances he um, has been almost from the moment in which he became a deputy chief. Uh, he ha joined us um, and was has been th thrust uh, several times, um, uh, even as he was acclimating to this this new role and having come back to Vermont um, into to take on more and more responsibility. Um, I'm very aware that in uh, creating this additional uh, position, um, yet again, um, uh, I am um, thrusting another uh, challenge uh, uh, towards uh, Chief Murad as well as the whole, whole department. Um, I have great confidence, full confidence, that he is, he is up to this challenge like he has been up to 
the ones prior. And just as I feel grateful to have uh, Kyle Dodson willing to, to stand up and do the work that needs to be done in this moment, I feel exactly the same way uh, regarding Chief Murad and uh, very thankful that he has chosen to make Burlington um, his home and, and the place where he's doing his life's work. So Chief Murad, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, so I became a cop for the purpose of keeping people safe, and the men and women who I am honored to lead did the same. And, and cops don't just want to have our neighbors' approval and our, our neighbors' help. We can't exist without those things. Right now, there are parts of our community that are saying that they won't, they can't provide that approval and that help. And our officers, your officers, keep doing their jobs regardless. They are out there doing them well. I am amazed daily and proud daily that they are doing it, even as they face the stress of diminishing headcount, uh, the stress of, of no slacking of the calls for service, and uh, not yet having the alternatives to their presence that we are working to develop with, for example, those community service liaisons. Our city is very lucky to have the police department that we have, this police department of this caliber. but. The historic role of the police has not always been good, particularly for people of color and for marginalized people. Racism has outlasted its more severe versions. It's outlasted slavery and Jim Crow and redlining and blockbusting and publicly permissible prejudice. But inequality abides. There is an abiding inequality in our healthcare and housing, abiding inequality in education and affluence, abiding inequality in public safety and criminal justice. And our officers have inherited these things too. They see it in call after call. They face conditions and behaviors that stem from it. And all of us want to change that. But as a great leader of people once said, change doesn't roll in on the wheels of inevitability. There are a lot of us pulling for change right now. The mayor, the city council, the police commission, protesters, advocates, I know that I am. But we are still coalescing around what that change should be. How can we transform public safety while continuing to keep people safe? Because that's the bottom line. It's the bottom line for me, for the men and women with whom I work, for our communities too, keeping people safe. And I am incredibly eager to see what Director Dodson can do to help get all of these stakeholders I mentioned to pull in the same direction and to pull together. Having Director Dodson on board at One North Avenue to gain an understanding of what police do and to share it with those stakeholders is a path forward. Having Director Dodson inculcate a deeper understanding at One North Avenue of the abiding inequalities of which I spoke is a path forward. The transformation of safety and fairness, it, it can lead the way for our state, it can lead the way for our profession, it can lead the way for the country if we do it right. And the city has done it before. It has done it right before on a number of markers. It's a road that we have to walk, and it's a road that we have to walk together. And this appointment by the mayor, Director Dodson's coming to One North Avenue, being able to coalesce those groups is the way we walk that road together. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, finally, I, I, I spoke to her role and uh, pinch hitting role before. Uh, Katie, um, welcome. Thank you for joining us for this event. It's good to be here. Good afternoon. My name is Katie Hawley, and I am proud to serve as vice chair of the Greater Burlington YMCA. For more than 150 years, the Y has stepped up when the Burlington community has needed us. This is what we do at the Y. In our daily work, the Y staff takes on some of society's biggest challenges, supporting families in need of high quality childcare, supporting individuals in the journey towards better health, and supporting the community by building connections based on our core values at the Y of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Earlier this summer, the Y proudly joined the mayor in public and acknowledging racism as a public health emergency. We deepened our commitment to fight racism and work towards a more inclusive and equitable world. Therefore, it was only natural when Kyle expressed his desire to take a temporary leave of absence, and we will hold him to it being a temporary leave of absence. It was only natural 
than when Kyle expressed the interest to serve Burlington community in this new role. It was an easy decision for the board to support him in doing so. We are optimistic about the mayor's concept. We believe it has the strong potential to accelerate the wise important work of serving our community immediately and over the long term. Our board and myself as an individual have enormous trust in Kyle. He's a talented, relationship-based leader who never shies away from a conversation that could lead to a positive change. Our board also has a strong belief in the rest of the leadership team at the Y. They're committed to the Y's mission of strengthening our community and being a place where all can belong. We know the Y is in good hands with the leadership team as Kyle takes this leave of absence. On behalf of the board, I will close by saying congratulations to Director Dodson, Mayor Weinberger, and Chief Murad. And I extend my deep appreciation and gratitude to the Y leadership team, as well as all Y staff who are stepping up in new ways to allow Kyle the space, time, and flexibility to serve Burlington in this new role. We believe this has the potential to benefit not just the Y, but all of Burlington. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, thank you all. Uh, I know we've uh, been talking for some time. we would be happy to try to take some questions if there are any. Mayor Weinberger, um, protesters have made clear uh, in Battery Park that they're not willing to leave unless key demands that Coro and Campbell are removed from the force. Um, while these initiatives that you've put forward you know, may progress um, issues on policing right now, how do you, how do you view resolving this issue with those? Protesters, if that major roadblock is still in the way. Well, thank you so much. So, um, thank you for the question. Um, uh, myself and, and the city council, um, and I did want to thank and acknowledge that we may have lost some, but councilors uh, Sarah Carpenter and, and Brian Pine were here earlier. Um, you know, we, we took an action on, on, on Monday uh, regarding Sergeant Bellavance. Uh, I've made clear. Um, where I stand with respect to the other to the other two officers, um, uh, I um, I guess my hope is that um, the people protesting in, in, in Battery Park, as well as uh, the clearly large numbers of other Burlingtonians who are very concerned um, ab about racial justice, who are very concerned uh, about um, uh, changing society in in this in this moment uh, where um, systemic racism has been laid bare by the combination of coronavirus and and the events when policing around the country this summer, I hope that that very large number of Burlingtonians who I believe care a great deal about these issues see in the combination the totality of our actions with uh, uh, earlier this week at the city council. Um, with these announcements today um, and with the other uh, work that we have committed ourselves to uh, as a city um, uh, in recent weeks and months, uh, that, that people will see a, a city that is very committed to try and make good on the, the promise and the opportunity of this moment. And uh, that's... Um, How do you uh, see you know, I, again, I, the, clearly um, we have taken s specific steps that do address some things being demanded by the protesters, whether it's body cam footage or uh, the, the action with Sergeant Bellavance. Um, I think what has made these protests so compelling uh, to uh, many Burlingtonians is, are the larger issues of racial justice. Um, it is there that I, I see um, real opportunity for common ground. I think many, many of us are working very hard to make progress in that direction. And, uh, you know, I, I would welcome uh, demonstrators into into that work and into to the, rolling up the sleeves and doing the hard work that's going to be necessary in the uh, weeks and months ahead, years ahead, to make good on uh, what we've been speaking about here uh, this morning, to make good on this idea that this is a moment for progress for, for racial justice. And I, I hope they join us in that. Mayor, um, you already have a director of racial equality in City Hall. 
and nothing against Mr. Dodson, wouldn't police transformation be a part of what she would be working on already? So why do you need another position? Uh, thank you, Pat. Yeah, fair question. We have created this new department um, within the last year. Uh, the steps towards this began in the summer of 2019 um, before, um, uh, bef you know, before all that has happened in 2020. Um, Taisha Green joined us. Uh, her first day was the day I delivered the state of the city, uh, just as in, in the beginning of April as the pandemic was beginning. Um, we've given Taisha a, a, a big job. Um, the, the work of dismantling systemic racism is, uh, is, 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 is massive. And um, she uh, is fully engaged um, already in um, uh, the creation of a new uh, strategic plan for how we will pursue racial equity, inclusion, and belonging in the city. She, she is uh, heading up efforts amidst the pandemic to um, communicate uh, and get help out to our BIPOC communities um, that are being disproportionately, you know, you know, fortunately because we're here in Vermont and we're here in Burlington and because uh, we've all come together to do so well with suppressing the virus, uh, the impacts on BIPOC communities have been less here than just about anywhere else, I believe. But still, if you looked at the new report out from uh, the Department of Health last week, uh, black black Vermonters are getting infected at, at basically 10 times the rate that that uh, the white whites are. So uh, what I'm saying is to boil it down, Pat, is she's got a big job. Her job was uh, primarily directed in these other areas. And I think we need additional capacity to do the work that needs to be done in policing. I think Kyle is the person and, and the leader uh, with long credibility in, in uh, years of sort of built up equity uh, as an honest broker, as he mentioned, to, to do that work. Uh, certainly, Taisha will be involved in it. Um, I think Kyle is the person, Kyle is the person to lead it. Um, also, when you were announcing the additional actions, um, yes. one of them was to expand uh, the, um, uh, or change the charter so that the mayor's office would have more of a role in disciplinary actions. That's not what I was actually talking about today, the changing the charter. The, 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 the consideration of changing the charter, and, and I'm sorry if I was unclear on this before, and hopefully it, it is clear in the press materials. The, 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 changing the, the consideration of changing the charter is something in the city council's hands. They're working on it, they're considering it. I have said since last January that um, I, I think they should look at uh, uh, getting rid of this section that is unlike anything else in the charter that really kind of prohibits, uh, kind of bars the, the, the mayor from involvement uh, in, in disciplinary decisions and some other policing matters. Um, uh, so I have suggested that there should be a charter change. What I, my executive order, though, is not waiting for a charter change. It is a change that is now in effect today with the issuance of this order that says for any uh, major disciplinary decision going forward, the police chief has a responsibility to fully brief um, uh, the mayor and get a recommendation from the mayor before making a decision. So I'm not sure that was even okay. your question, but I want to make that clarification. In any case, what what will the role of the city council be uh, in you know if if you are involved in those disciplinary decisions? Yeah. What's the role of the city council going to be? You know, typically speaking, the council has a very limited role in, in, in employee disciplinary decisions. They may look to change that with respect to the police and this work that's going on. Uh, that that has not historically uh, been a role for 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 our council or, or generally, I think, of city councils. Uh, you know, you look the whole concept of our council mayor form of government to some degree makes uh, you know gives the the mayor as the chief executive officer. Um, uh, that uh, that responsibility for, for management and disciplinary decisions. So perhaps that's going to change with this work going on. We'll have to just have to see. Uh, on this topic, just yeah. clarifying question. Yep. Is it mandatory that the mayor make a recommendation or optional? And, and in either case, um, are those recommendations going to be public record? Um, so the way I've written the executive order, it, 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 it basically indicates the mayor will issue a recommendation before before the discipline is taken so it's 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 cer certainly something that I see as a responsibility and, and that will happen going forward um, I the, you know the question of um, 
it being public is uh, frankly, Derek, it's a fair one, and um, I uh, probably, you know, doesn't explicitly state, speak to that in the executive order. I probably should think about it a little bit more before definitively saying that. But I, I think I hope you've seen in 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 the way I've been talking about this this morning, as well as the specific. Uh, commitment to review and try to make more transparent what we do with our investigations. Um, uh, we're trying to move in the direction of uh, greater transparency uh, around uh, around these actions, and um, uh, I, I would think uh, um, you know I would think most mayors would want to make their 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 position uh, clear in some way. But there's probably some f details to that that you know, frankly, it's. We're moving quick here, and we're figuring out new things, and, and that exa exactly that ans answer I don't have for you yet. But I, I, I will get back to you quickly on that. If you release body camera footage of these sensitive yep. incidents, presumably you're also going to be making recommendations on those same incidents. So why is yeah. it, uh, why is this a question of whether or not your opinion would be released or your, your recommendation? Right. You know, again, Liam, I think it's a fair question. I just want to think about it a little bit further. And you know, this is a, this is this is something new. And and I just I, I want to think about what would the impact be then of uh, if the mayor were to make a recommendation uh, that was ran counter to what the police chief chose to do. Um, I just need to think about it a little bit further. I, I probably could circle back up even give you an answer on that um, today. But I, I, you guys know me. I like to be a little you know a little bit deliberative and thoughtful before. Uh, uh, making significant, and this is a wrinkle of it that I hadn't completely thought through. What's the weight of your recommendation then? I mean, if it, if you, you know, if you're just making a recommendation, and mm -hmm. if it goes counter to what the chief says, like what weight does it actually carry? Um. <clears throat> so, you know, again, um, under the charter, um, this is uh, this is the limit, I think, of what. Uh, and the mayor can do consistent with with the charter and um, uh, we are writing an executive order consistent with what the law that is in place today um, I, I think uh, it would bear upon uh, any chief uh, and, and does bear and it's not like these de these decisions have never been brought to the and I, I don't want to suggest that I was never involved in past disciplinary decisions or uh, but what this does is it formalizes that process, it formalizes it in structures and ensures that, um, that the proper uh, deliberation and effort and review goes in to the, the mayor making a recommendation. And I think it will, it will uh, even more so than in the past, uh, with having a formal process around it, uh, I think it will have an impact on um, what uh, uh, the, the chiefs, future chiefs, decide to do with disciplinary decisions. I have, I have one other question. Sure, Derek. <laughs> there's a little bit of a, a deja vu, vu quality to everything that's going on this year, and that, and that last year there were similar demands to mm -hmm. fire these three officers. And in response to that, the city set up a, a yep. council committee that, and similar to now, you know, viewed police as a partner in that process. And, and the outcome of that process, I believe, was change is far short of sort of the transformational uh, uh, discussion you're having now. I'm wondering what you think is going to make this time around different. Well, I, I think that is uh, fair. That, that's, uh, that's a little bit how I've experienced this as well, Derek. Um, I, I do think that committee got done some important work. We have a new use of force policy in place now that is a uh, much better representation, I think, of what how the community wants us to deploy for, force from our officers than before. Um, Chief Murad has spoken eloquently about it. It, it. it has gone from, I think, having the word de-escalation in it once to 17 different times. I think it does, I think important work got done. But um, uh, um, the reason I am taking this action today, um, the reason I am increasing the administration's capacity to engage the community, to en engage various council pro uh, committee processes, whether it's this joint committee or the commission or uh, the public safety uh, committee of the council or any kind of new structures that are getting set up, um, uh, it, it is, um, I am increasing the capacity of the administration to engage those processes and make sure that they are driven to conclusion and get driven to results. And um, uh, that is in essence why I think we need this position is because we have, I am, I'm seeking to accelerate um, 
uh, our pace of change in this area and make sure it gets done in a way that um, has the confidence of the people of Burlington. And so, yeah, that is our, our history. That's why we're here today. And that's why I'm taking the steps we are today is to, is, is to, to accelerate that work and, and uh, better achieve the change that I think Burlingtonians are seeking uh, for us to do. Do you want to just let, let's just let Derek finish and, and, and but we should I was move just it out. If Kyle wanted to weigh in on this because it sounded like you thought you, you thought long and hard about whether this was something that was going to be worth getting involved in. Yeah, the, the deja vu uh, aspect of it, and, and maybe even going back to I'm sorry, was it Pat? Yeah. Uh, I had some thoughts, Pat, and uh, uh, is there yeah is there redundancy with uh, Taisha and me? Um, and uh, uh, I would say uh, what we're hoping for and back to that hope um, I believe when you have big problems there's precedent for us as a uh, as, as, as a nation as communities as as uh, human beings to uh, realize that sometimes the best you can do is trial and error when you don't have a clear answer right we've been the we've been fighting cancer for how long and right now there's lots of trial and error going on uh, we're trying to fight COVID. It's trial and error to get to the vaccine. Sometimes that's the best we have. The thornier the problem, I would argue that's the best we have. Um, so you keep coming at it, and I think that's what this is. Taisha's here. Uh, Taisha's doing incredible work. She's smart. She's competent. She's passionate. She's committed. Uh, but Taisha's, Taisha's from Minnesota, um, and I think there's a really uh, nice opportunity to have someone who's uh, been part of the community and uh, uh, committed like I am. Uh, arguably, I, I think I could probably show up in any part of our community uh, I will have a relationship with someone there. Um, and it's just the reality that uh, relationships matter, right? Uh, there was a quote, I was talking to someone last night, I can't remember if it was Katie, but uh, the idea that organizations move at the speed of trust. Human interactions move at the speed of trust. Uh, and so if I show up in the New North End, if I show up in the police department, I'm gonna know lots of the officers. I haven't spent a lot of time there before, uh, but I'm gonna know lots of the officers. And that'll change uh, the equation. Does not in and of itself get it done. But it is a new effort, and I think there's a different angle. Uh, so that's one of the things is um, talk is cheap for all of us, and uh, I hope to be able to leverage trust, relationships, looking in people's eyes, a common sense of what we want for our children, a common sense of what we want for Burlington. Uh, this isn't about choosing sides, but I'll be clear. Uh, I'm moving from what I see as the reality is we have a racist past and we have a racist current. That's just a fact. Uh, and uh, the way people deal with the facts is what determines whether or not it becomes a choosing sides. I'm moving forward as if it's not a choosing sides. I uh, am going to uh, hope that everyone can respect the overwhelming evidence uh, in support of that. And then the work is how, what, what we do to deal with that. Um, so uh, entering with humility, uh, this is a big one. Uh, it will be hubristic to think you'll just come in uh, and change it, but uh, this is different. It's new this time. What's happened during COVID, post uh, George Floyd, something different is happening and the question is can we transform that uh, can we uh, um, inter uh, intervene interact in such a way that does allow this time uh, to be different um, and uh, we'll see right but we're, we're all going to do the best we can and that's why I jumped in is because I think there's an opportunity uh, to try to come from different angles uh, leverage from things uh, it's probably this this position uh, unfortunately will be the um, I think, and you know, we can look at the history, but the highest level position in city government that a BIPOC person has ever held. It's 2020. That's, that's uh, you know, there's something to that. Um, and so that is, that's a move, right? In and of itself, it doesn't get the work done. Uh, but as Chief Murad has uh, mentioned, as 54 years on this earth living a certain uh, ex experience of reality, I have perspectives that I can share um, that uh, um, I, I think add to the conversation, the conversation I can have with police officers, the conversation we have with all our uh, partners in the, in the community uh, that we need to ask to come uh, with us and, and you know, all row in the same direction. Ross, go ahead. That, go ahead. that satisfied my question. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm sorry if you can speak a little bit more. Can you just, uh, we, we, just have there's, we have people we haven't gotten to yet? Fine, thanks. How are you? So you voiced your concern about downsizing the department a bunch. Does this community liaison program ease some of those concerns about providing the same level of policing 
in communities with 74 officers as opposed to 90. Is that going to be a big help? I know you kind of touched on it. Sure. Well, two positions is not the equivalent of losing, you know, uh, upwards of 20 or more, but it's a start. And it's exactly the kind of thing that we are talking about when we say, can we replace certain kinds of services that are currently provided by police with other kinds of resources? And I'm actually really, really encouraged by that. The, the community uh, affairs liaison who currently works for the police department is a, a non-sworn uh, member of our department. She is a social worker. She's remarkable and she does remarkable remarkable work with regard to a lot of the communities that we work with on a regular basis, on a recurring basis. People who are houseless, people who are suffering through substance use disorder, people who have mental health issues that are not going to be solved by, certainly not by custodial mental health care, but rather by, by recurring and constant engagement. She's great at that. Great. The idea of being able to augment the services that she provides and actually taking some of those things off the, the plate of the police and, frankly, off the plate of others because some of these individuals, especially those with mental health concerns, also routinely call the newspapers, they call uh, they call city councilors, they call a lot of people. Being able to address those with trained people who are uh, on our city's payroll, who are therefore really obligated by that, uh, that responsibility, that civic responsibility to engage is a path forward and it's absolutely the kind of thing. Is that enough alone to make up for 74 with our call volume? No, it's not. But it's a start and that's how we get down this road. We take one step and we make a start working on it. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think we got time for maybe two more questions. So, Gracie, another question? Uh, yeah, I was curious if you could be a little bit more specific about why the city attorney is looking into the police union contract. What specifically are you hoping to revise prior to the two year yeah. renegotiation when it comes up as scheduled? Well, let me be clear. I, I don't think there's likely to be revisions before the two years. I, I think this is preparation, getting ready for uh, negotiations for a future contract that will probably begin about a year from now. Um, I, the police contracts, police union contracts, have become um, uh, come to the forefront of discussions about um, uh, how we ensure that um, you know, how. They've come to the forefront of the police reform discussion in a way that they haven't been in, in prior uh, efforts to improve American policing. And I think we need to be part of that discussion. Um, they're, they're, uh, you know, I, I, I want to repeat something I've said many times in the past, which is I don't think all of, I don't think the Burlington Police Officer Association should be kind of painted with the same negative broad brush that some other police unions, I think, are rightly painted with. I think we have a very different situation here than, for example, the situation in Minneapolis. I've always found our police union one that uh, engages these discussions and um, will hear me out uh, when I talk about uh, reforms and, and innovations, and I don't think has been the, uh, the kind of recalcitrant uh, negative force that I, I hear about in other cities. That said, um, I think there are legitimate questions about our contract and the, the um, uh, certain details around uh, how um, long disciplinary actions about officers are, are, you know, in the in the personnel file. There, there's, there's, there are certainly there are clearly things within the Burlington Police Department that are not immune. Uh, that they're consistent with some of the indictments that we're hearing at, at a national level. And I'd like the city attorney uh, to help getting us ready uh, to evaluate that. I think it will be something that, um, that the council and, uh, and I um, will find valuable um, as, as we head into those future negotiations. And I want the public to know we're going to be paying attention to this and, and, and looking at this and not ignoring this, this area uh, of concern. And can you comment on the actions that the protesters took last night to round up all of the seven days um, papers that were out on newsstands and to light them on fire and to throw them away? What did you think of that? Uh, you know, I, I, um, I, I am going to uh, let others uh, speak to that. I, 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 I'll just leave it at that. I, why, why? Why are you unwilling to address it? <coughs> Um, all right, I, I guess I'll say this. I, I, to me, the idea of burning printed material, burning words, uh, it, it does um, 
uh, uh, conjures up um, uh, historic scenes that um, uh, it's uncomfortable to see playing out here in Burlington. I, I was not uh, um, comfortable seeing that. I, I don't, I, I think, uh, um, um, I want to, um, I, I, I hope that that, the fact that that action does not distract from, um, I think, the uh, other um, actions that the protesters have taken, other, you know, I, I, do, I do see, as many Burlingtonians do, um, that part of what these protests have been about have been about the larger calls for, for racial justice and and doing the hard work that we're trying to do here today, and uh, and and uh, I want to I, I want to continue to work to to be focused on that and, and move in that direction. Mayor, do you expect Kyle is in position to play any role in uh, the search for a, a new chief in the long term? Um, uh, interesting question, Ross. Um, you know, uh, I'll tell you, Kyle played a role in our search for our last chief. He was uh, one of. Uh, about 50 members of the community that um, uh, I brought together to evaluate all of our finalist candidates, and I um, uh, actually it was more than that, right, Kyle? You were on the whole committee, the whole the, from the. So sorry, Kyle was was on the nine-person committee we put together. I can't remember exactly how big it was, but uh, and actually, you know, I appreciate you reminding me of that, Ross. I'm sort of a, like uh, uh, it's uh, that was definitely one of the experiences where I think. Um, the trust that Kyle and I having each other on these issues grew. Um, I know that he um, uh, had very similar judgments about the uh, uh, candidates um, uh, that, I, that not, when he shared them, I thought they were very astute and wise. And I know people, other people on the committee responded similarly to that. So it's that actually is uh, one of the, the experiences with Kyle that gives me confidence. He's the guy for this job. I'm sure he will be involved in the search for and the decisions about a new chief whether it is you know the, the timeline is such that it, you know i don't ex I, I think that that search will just be go getting going when we are uh, projecting this temporary role to be coming to a close but uh if if i'm the one that gets to make uh, those decisions uh, about the next chief i definitely will be looking to kyle to help weigh in he'll definitely be one of a handful of people that i, I will really want their uh uh you know, um, you know, we're, we're working closely with uh, to get that decision right. All right, thank you all. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you for sticking with us for a long, uh, long event. Have a good afternoon and a good weekend, everyone.